Shay here. Today in Homemade Science, I want to take a look at some of my favorite demonstrations using hydrogen gas. Now, there's a couple different ways we could get it. If you don't have a hydrogen tank available, well, we can generate some of our own, either using electrolysis or a chemical reaction between uh, a metal such as zinc and a little bit of hydrochloric acid. I've added some of the hydrochloric acid and zinc in this flask, and I'm using a stopper and glass tube to collect some of the gas in this long balloon. In this single replacement reaction, the zinc and the hydrogen are exchanging places to give us the new products zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Now, one of the first things we learn about hydrogen gas, of course, is that it's lighter than air. <laughs> the second thing we should know about hydrogen, of course, is that it's extremely flammable. As you can see, this reaction is very exothermic. What we're seeing is a synthesis reaction with a hydrogen and oxygen are combining to form water. Now since hydrogen is so light, the air that was in the bottle will be pushed out the bottom as hydrogen fills up the bottle. It's time to test this one out in the hallway. Rapidly expanding gas is going backwards as the bottle goes forwards is actually a nice example of Newton's third law. Oh my god. Oh. Now instead of a soda bottle, how about if we try it in a long narrow container? Let me remove this flask. One, two, three. Now, my good friend Steve Spangler likes to open his Pringles potato chips using hydrogen, so let's give that a try. To do this, we need two holes in the can. One here at the top, right in the center, and the second one is located down here at the bottom. In this case, I've added a second flask, and I'm bubbling the gas that's produced through water to help capture any zinc chloride produced in the reaction. Hopefully, this will improve the quality of the hydrogen. As hydrogen burns outside the can, oxygen is drawn into that little hole at the bottom until it reaches the ideal combustion ratio. You can hear a buzzing noise that gets deeper as it gets close to that point. The final combustion is a small explosion inside the can. Well, that worked pretty good. Now, let's try it with a larger can. And there we go. Our Pringles potato chips.
if you like other snacks, I have a little bag of popcorn here, and I want to see if I can open this with the hydrogen gas. In this case, we're adding hydrogen gas to the bag. I've added a piece of aluminum foil tape to the outside of the bag to keep the plastic from burning. Here's a small snack bag of crackers. Let's try opening this bag with hydrogen. Well, that wasn't quite as good as the popcorn, but it still worked. Now let's try that again. Now I have a bag of pretzels. Once again, I'm adding a small piece of aluminum foil with a hole in it, and this is going to help keep the Mylar bag from burning. Now I thought I'd try this once more. This is a can of shoestring potatoes, slightly larger than the Pringles. Let's fill this up with hydrogen and see if we can open this can. All right, I think it's time for some shoestring potatoes. Well, that works really well. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on hydrogen, and I have one last demonstration that I'd like to show you which explains why they don't put hydrogen in balloons that they sell to children. So, let's put a match to this one and see what happens. Two, three. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. One final note. Working with chemicals, you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can get in trouble very, very easily. Also, producing hydrogen, it is flammable. And once again, you can get in trouble unless you know what you're doing. I would discourage anybody from doing these experiments without proper supervision, without fully understanding the dangers that are inherent in it.